So even though it does look like a lot and like I'm looking here, I'm like, this is a lot for being on a no buy, right? Um, and there are areas for improvement, obviously, but I do see a shift already. Hey, hi, hello, friends. Welcome back to my channel. So today will be my first no buy. Hi. It'll be my first no buy update. So this will be for the entire month of January. I'm actually going to share with you everything that I have purchased this month um, and share some notes that I have about those purchases. And um, obviously that doesn't include like groceries and things like that, but I did include some like supplement products because that was one of the categories that was included in my no buy rules. So um, yeah, here we go. And if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you like this video at any point, make sure and hit that thumbs up button and also um, hit the subscribe button if you think this is content that you'd be interested in following. I do upload, try and upload several times a week. Um, I'm still kind of working out the kinks on my upload schedule. So anyways, let's get into it. Okay, um, I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually just gonna show you everything that I bought. And then I will, as I go, kind of share notes with you about those things. Um, I, let me start out by saying I did have a, um, I, I'm not gonna go into deep, I won't go into detail, but I did have a very um, a family, I don't know what the word is, we had a death in our family. So, um, I sort of went off the rails a little bit and um, realized actually that shopping is a coping strategy for me. That was extremely illuminating to me after that happened and the things that followed it really showed me that I had been using shopping as a crutch and as a coping mechanism. So um, there are some areas where I did overbuy and um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to make excuses, but I, that's kind of the reasoning behind that. I was tries trying to cope. Uh, to be fair, I am still trying to cope. I mean, I'm obviously not, it's not something I'm going to get over anytime soon, but, um, yeah. So <laughs> I'll just <clears throat> start off with that. And, um, I think that's pretty much it. Let me kind of look through here. Yeah. I'll go over the rest of these notes, um, kind of at the end. Um, and We'll kind of talk about some strategies that I use. But first, let's talk about everything that I have purchased. The first thing that I bought, and actually these are not in order of like when I purchased them. I sort of lumped them by category. So this is not in any particular like date order. Um, this is just what I bought in these specific types of categories. Murphy, come here. Can you sit? Okay. Um, so... First up is pens. So I am so picky about my pens and I would not expect my, I work for a nonprofit. So I would not expect my employer to take the money and, and create more of an overhead expense for my pen preference. So I bought my own pens because it makes my job more enjoyable. It makes my day more enjoyable. But if you know, you know, those Sharpie S gels 0.7 are where it's at. Okay. Yeah. I bought my own pens. It is what it is. I'm not sorry. I love those pens. They're amazing and they're the best and don't come for me in the comments. Actually do come for me in the comments. If you think there's a better pen out there, comment below and let me know. Um, the other next thing I bought was, again, these are not in date order, is a cover for my Kindle. So I actually have the really old. This is from 2011. This is a very old Kindle. I did have a cover on it, but the it was like one of this the same kind where like it's covered like this, but the front flap came off. Like it literally broke at the seam. So, um, I don't want to have to replace this because I actually genuinely like this one. I've used other Kindles, like more recent versions and I don't enjoy them as much. So I want to protect this. So I bought another cover. Um, let's see what I have next. I did also break my no buy in terms of books and I don't know if there's an excuse where I tried every single avenue I could to find this book. So um, I did end up purchasing a book called Replacing Darwin and I bought the Kindle version so I don't actually have the um, hard copy with me but I bought it on Kindle and um, yeah so that one I like I said I tried every possible avenue 
to get that other than purchasing it. Couldn't find it anywhere. So I bought it. That was one. So not off to a great start. Um, next up. So this was one category um, that I also broke it a little bit. Stretched it. Broke it. Um, candles. So I used up my very last candle. And that was in my back stock. And I needed to buy a replacement. So I went to Marshall's and I found these. And I literally know nothing about them other than that they smell incredible and they have a wood wick, which I love wood wicks. Now, this was something that I purchased immediately after getting the news about my family member passing. So I bought, I went a little off the rails there. I bought three. I'm very excited to try them, but I did buy three instead of just one. So that if you recall, and I'll actually post my no buy video as well. Um, one of my rules was that I wasn't going to buy back stocks. I'm going to buy one at a time and I stretched it. So anyway, bought some candles. What do I have next? Oh, so another part of my no buy was that I wasn't going to buy any um, housewares. I have been really struggling with my sleep and I sort of been kind of working through the, some things to narrow down what it was that was the problem. And it was my pillow and it was causing me a lot of pain and discomfort. So the next couple of things I bought were to help me get better sleep. So um, I hadn't bought a new pillow in forever and our mattress is not new. It's not horribly old, but it's not new. So I did buy a new pillow and a mattress topper. The pillow I bought is from a company called Cushion Lab. I've been using this now for a week and I'm not at all sorry that I bought it, you guys. The last week has been the best sleep that I've gotten in months. It really was necessary. Um, my my health was suffering because I was getting such poor sleep. So um, I think that sort of falls under my um, health and safety category where, you know, I needed something because I was really struggling. Like my sleep was quality was so poor and I was really, really struggling. And it was affecting all the other areas of my life. Okay. Um, the next category is like, like hygiene or like self-care sort of, I guess. I, if you've seen, I actually posted a previous video and I'm getting ready to film a new one. I love to do my nails. So I do, don't, but actually I'm missing my fingernail. Don't look at that one. But, um, I do my own nails at home and it brings me so much joy. I genuinely love it. As I was doing this manicure, I realized that my little fine point, um, nail art brush that I have was really frayed and it was getting kind of gummy and gunky. So I did buy some new, um, nail art brushes. These are from Beatles. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I actually bought a set because it was like the same price to buy a set with different lengths as it was to buy just one. They all have different, um, length brushes. I do use them on a regular basis when I'm doing my nails, like if I'm doing nail art. I also paint my daughter's nails and she likes little designs on hers. So I don't know if that technically is breaking my no buy. I'm, I'm hoping next month to buy much less in general. But anyways, we'll go over that at the end. I noticed while I was painting my nails this last time that some of my polishes are getting a little thick. So I bought some thinner. I did also purchase a new bag of collagen. I use powdered collagen and I put it in my coffee every morning. So I did replace that. That was the one thing I think in my supplement category. I also bought toothbrushes. Not that I feel like this isn't necessarily something I need to share, but I thought it was fair to share it because one, again, one of my rules was that I wasn't going to buy back stock of things. I was going to buy one at a time. However, I cannot purchase these toothbrushes in a one pack, but I wanted to share it because it's not just one toothbrush. It's six, but I couldn't buy just one. So, okay. What is next? Let's see here. Oh, I bought some more deodorant. I love Saltaire. Their deodorant is incredible. So I got this one for my daughter, one for me, and one for my husband. And I did want to point out, I was shopping on Saltaire's website and I was so tempted to buy some more lotion and some body wash, but I do not need them. I still have back stock that I'm working through. So I was pretty proud of myself for being strong and only ordering the deodorant that we needed. So pat on the back for me. Okay. Let's do some hair care products. So I have been kind of on a journey with my hair. I dye it red. 
and there is just no way around the damage that is involved with dyeing your hair red. Um, I wanted to give this a shot and I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and so far I do think it is it is helping. I do notice my hair feeling a lot less frizzy. The ends feel a little bit more sleek after I use it. I've only used it three times, I think. Um, I only wash my hair a couple times a week, so, and I haven't used it every single time, but um, I do really like this. It's a pre-shampoo. I like it so far. I'll do a more thorough review when I do my empties, but um, I really like it, and I do feel like it's benefiting my hair, and I didn't have anything else like this in my in my house or my inventory that fell into this kind of repair category. I do have some masks and obviously I have conditioners, but I don't have anything that was actually like repairing it. So this was a new category, I guess you could say. Um, we'll see how it goes if I purchase it again or try a different bond repair product in the future. Um, the other hair care products that I bought was this Heritage by Mindy scalp exfoliators. I didn't own anything else that would fall into that category. So had to buy a new one. Um, oh, I have a couple more hair care things. So I had to buy a new hairbrush. This is, is, I hope it's not dirty, I cleaned it out. This is the Wet Brush. This is the Wet Brush Pro, I think. I had to buy a new one because this guy right here chewed up another hair. Okay, let me just say, I have had to buy like four new hairbrushes in the last year because if he gets his mouth on it, he will demolish it. So this is our newest hairbrush. <laughs> we buy them all the time. It's ridiculous, honestly. Um, I did also buy a couple of hair like tools. So I use, and I don't even know if I have any around. Let me see if I've got one. Oh, so for the longest time I was using these little jaw clips to hold my hair back. And I had a whole bunch of them. I had probably like 10 of them floating around my house. And over time, they've all just, the teeth kind of break off eventually and, or they get lost or whatever. This is my very last one. And so this time around, I decided to try a different style of hair clip for when I, cause I use them for like when I'm doing my hair to like pull it off my face or like if I'm washing my face, I pull it back or whatever. Um, so I decided to try something a little bit different, like different style. And I did end up getting these, this style of like, where it's got the flat, almost look like a little duck bill. So I got a pack of these because um, they're supposed to be creaseless, which that's what I liked about those clippies is that they didn't leave creases in my hair. Um, but I'm gonna try these out, see how I like them. Um, and then I also did buy a pack of thermal rollers. These are the like ceramic ones that you like put in your hair and then kind of blow dry or whatever. I'm trying to figure out ways to style my hair um, to make it just look more more finished and more refined. I don't have any curlers at all. So um, there wasn't anything else in this category. And like I said, I do have a curling iron, but I'm trying not to use that much direct heat on my hair that often. Like I do want to curl my hair occasionally, but like not, not like that. Plus I was looking for something to give me kind of those big waves. So anyways, I'm going to try these out. I will say this month, I feel like I've had a lot of new categories, which hopefully will be less next year, next year, next month. Although this did feel like a year, right? Doesn't January feel like it's 8,000 days long? I don't know, it took forever to get through January. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go on to a category that um, I bought a lot of stuff in and um, I'll kind of explain as I go, but my skin's been going through it. <laughs> so I have dry skin anyway. And then in the winter time with like the heat on and everything, my skin gets even more dry. Um, and then I did recently start tretinoin, which is a uh, pharmaceutical grade retinoid or retinol. I actually don't know the difference between the two. I just know that tretinoin is like the strongest and it's like you have to get a prescription for it. Anyway, so I started tretinoin and my skin has been thirsty. So most of the products that I bought were because of that transition and needing to find some things that were more hydrating. So I actually, these first two, so I really love this Peach Slices Snail Rescue line. This blemish busting toner, I've been using this consistently for a little over six months and I do feel like it makes an incredible difference on my skin. So this was a repurchase um, and I was just running low so I got a new one. This was also a replacement that I ordered at the same time. Um, I've been using this as my daytime and nighttime moisturizer. It is great under skin or under makeup, however, 
after starting my tretinoin, this is just not enough for me on the nights that I use tretinoin and then the nights like at nighttime. So I bought this before I realized I was going to need something a little bit heavier. So I've been using this in the morning and I did order another moisturizer that has not arrived yet. So I, I guess net right now I am still technically using this morning and night and I'm waiting for my nighttime moisturizer to come in. Um, <clears throat> the nighttime moisturizer that I ordered is the Kiehl's um, Ultra Cream, I think is what it's called. And I'm hoping that it helps kind of soothe my skin and pump some hydration back into it. Because let me tell you, the tretinoin is, it, it's a little rough on your skin when you're starting out, I think. So another thing that I purchased because of my dry skin is this um, Rose Water and Glycerin Hydrating Facial Mist. I don't own any other facial mists at all. But glycerin, I have found, is such a hero ingredient for dry skin, and it's so criminally underrated. Everyone praises hyaluronic acid as this, like, miracle ingredient. I actually find hyaluronic acid not to be great for my skin because I feel like it actually sucks the moisture out of my skin more so than it puts moisture into my skin. But glycerin has been incredibly hydrating for my skin, so that's something that I look for in hydrating products is glycerin. And this is... Like that's the second ingredient in here. So it's been extremely helpful in getting some hydration back into my skin. And um, yeah, really, really, really like this facial mist. It's been great this winter so far. Um, I did also, this is one that, this was a, that I broke my no buy. I did not need to buy any more lip products, but I wanted to try something with lanolin in it. And I have so many lip balms. There's no way I was going to get through it before like the winter was over but my lips have been so freaking dry, drier than they've ever been in my whole life. Sorry if things just changed. I had to kind of close my blinds a little bit because the sun is finally shining and it was making weird. It's actually still making like a <laughs> weird light, but anyway, um, so I picked up some of this DHC lip cream. Oh, it's upside down. They come up in a little, little twist up bullet. Anyway, I did not need these. I should have probably just used what I've got, but I was desperate for something to help with my lips. And I don't know if this is the miracle I was looking for or hoping it would be, but I bought them. So <laughs> I now have more lip balms, but we here we are. Um, another skincare product that I bought was the was a new vitamin C. So I actually was using my actually my empties. I'll post my empties video. I used up the last of my Timeless Vitamin C and um, it is one of my favorites. It's great. I really, really enjoyed that product. And um, so I wanted, but I wanted to try something a little different because I've been using it for so long. So I actually ordered one off of Amazon from a company called The Minimalist and my order got lost somewhere in transit. So I got a refund for that and then I placed an order because I ran out of my um, exfoliating serum that I use. So I was looking at the May Love website and I was going to order their exfoliating serum. And I got, you know, the message or whatever from Amazon that my order had been lost. And so I got a refund for that. And I went ahead and placed an order on May Love for a new, vit their vitamin C and their exfoliating um, serum. So um, that is coming in the mail. I have not received those yet. I did also purchase another toner. So I, this is kind of a gray area. I did purchase this polyhydroxy acid, PHA, from Minimalist. I actually purchased this at the same time as I purchased the vitamin C. It was on Amazon. Apparently, they shipped in different packages or from different sellers or whatever, and this one arrived, but the vitamin C did not. So I've used a PHA product in the past, but I haven't had one in my inventory for a long time, but highly recommend, especially this formula. I think this formulation is great. Minimalist has wonderful formulations, and they're very affordable, so definitely recommend this. Um, again, did I need it? Did I need it? No. So I'll do better next month. <laughs> um, let's see what else is on there. I already talked about, I got started on tretinoin. I was doing an over the counter retinoid from the ordinary and I ran out of that. I did actually buy that one in bulk. So I was storing it in my refrigerator and I had one bottle left of that and I opened it and I think it went rancid because it smells funky. And I was like, I'm not putting that on my face. Retinoids are harsh enough as it is. I'm not going to put an expired retinoid on my face. So I actually had to declutter that one because it was bad. 
But um, then I ordered the, that's when I ordered the Tretinoin and got my Tretinoin going. So I think that's it for, oh no, that's not true. So I did actually buy a new brush soap. So I previously had been using this pink soap called Zote, Z-O-T-E. Everybody recommends it. I've been using it just fine for years to clean my brushes and have not had any issues. This last time I, or not last time, but like in the beginning of January, I went to go clean my brushes and I was using a new bar of it. And I don't know if they reformulated it or what was going on with it. But first of all, it was incredibly crumbly. I don't remember. I used to be able to cut off like a little chunk of it because I buy the big bars. And so I'd cut off a chunk and then I would just use that. Um, it was incredibly crumbly. I couldn't even cut off a block of it, like a little piece of it. And it was leaving a weird film on my brushes. And I just, it, it was taking forever to dry. It was leaving this weird residue. So... I bought a new brush cleanser from Eco Tools. I actually think I forgot to grab it. It's downstairs, but um, it's like a liquid brush cleanser. It works just fine. I don't have any problems with it. When I bought that brush cleanser, I actually also bought this, like a, it's a brush cleaning tool, I guess. I just brought up this because it's got a picture on it so you can see. So it comes with like a little bowl and then it has this thing right here and you insert your brush into this and, um, it spins it around. This is marketed as something that you can just literally put your tool, your makeup brush on it, stick it in the bowl, swish it around, it'll be clean. That I, I have not found that to be the case. And I don't know if it's this product or if it's the cleanser I'm using not being strong enough, but I do still have to go in on my like scrubby mat and kind of scrub it out. But I do find this to be a great way to rinse the brushes off and get them nice and clean and it spins them really dry. They dry so quickly after using this. So I do find this to be useful. I, I wish it was, I wish it worked as advertised because I think that would have been a lot better for me because also part of the reason I bought this was because I wanted to reduce my water usage. And, um, but I still feel like I'm using less water, but I still feel like it could be better if this product actually cleansed the brushes as well as it was marketed that it does. But um, yeah, so I bought that and I don't know if I regret it, but it's not as great as I thought it would be. So anyways, I think that's it. Let me just double check, look over my list, talked about all that. Oh, I should also mention, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, but um, I had signed up for Ipsy in November and then it took forever to get my <laughs> first bag. By the time I received my first bag, I had actually forgotten and they shipped it to me and they had already processed my next bag. So I got my November bag, I guess in December, and then they had processed my December bag and shipped it to me. So I actually received both bags in, I got, let's see, was it at the end of December? Yeah, I received both bags in January and I have since canceled that. So I did have some products in there that I received um, and I shared a couple of them in my empties and will continue to share as I use those up. But um, I did get rid of some of them because it was stuff that I wouldn't use. And, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that because it was things that were coming into my inventory because I had just forgotten. So <laughs> anyways, that is what it is. Um, okay, I think that's all the products, which I will, let me st just say, to me, I, and I don't know like what level everybody else is at, the fact that I can sit here and put like pull all of the things that I've ordered like beauty products or even like self-care products like nails or home goods or whatever, the fact that I can get those all together in one video is mind blowing to me. I was purchasing so much so frequently that this would not have been possible. So even though it does look like a lot and like I'm looking here, I'm like, this is a lot for being on a no buy, right? Um, and there are areas for improvement, obviously, but I do see a shift already. The fact that I can pinpoint, I can say, I bought this in January. I know exactly. It's a much more mindful for me. So I don't just like willy nilly spend. I, there is thought that goes into it and I can, I know where my money is going. I can say, yes, I know I bought that in January and I can get it together and I can share it with you in a single video. So for me, that is progress, honestly. Um, let me see. I did make some other notes as I, as the month went on. Um, and I, one thing I will say, I actually, like I said, I am used to buying backups of things. So I 
For my skincare, in terms of like replacement items, I only bought one. I didn't buy multiples of anything, I only bought one. So I only have one item in each category for my skincare, which is a big improvement for me too. Because before, I, you know, I, I, I would get in the habit of buying like multiple things to try out different things. But I've really been mindful about bringing one at a time. And then if I use that, when I use that up, if I want to try something different, I will pick a different I, different product and try that. Um, <clears throat> the I, I made some notes about times when I was like resisted the urge to buy more. One of them was when I bought this face mist, it was buy one, get one 40% off. And I was incredibly tempted to buy two of them because it's such a good deal, right? But that, in my head, I was like, no, you can't. Like, it's the automatic no. It really helped me. Um, I only bought the one. I only need the one. This is a huge bottle and I've been using this all month almost and I barely used up any. I do not need another one. So I'm not gonna need another one for a hot minute. So anyway, I was proud of myself for resisting the temptation in that. And let's see, um, I will say all of the new categories that I started, like the PHA toner, like the um, exfoliating toner, the facial spray, um, any of those new categories that started this month that I didn't already have something, so it wasn't a replacement, but it wasn't technically buying a duplicate of something. Those were all things that while they might not have been like completely necessary, I wasn't, I did not overspend or overpurchase in those categories. And they were things that I thought, I really thought through those mindfully and thought, you know, is there something else in my, that I have that I could use to serve this purpose? And I did try really hard to do that whenever possible. So I didn't just buy them as an excuse to buy something. They, they were mindfully purchased for their intended category and purpose. Um, let's see. Oh, one thing I did learn is for me personally, I have made it a habit to go to Amazon instead of Ulta when I'm looking for something specific because Ulta is a huge trigger for me because they always have sales going on. I've got my wish list on Ulta. So it's like I go to my cart and I can see all the things that are on my save for later list. So Ulta is a really big trigger for me in overspending and overpurchasing. So I've made it a habit if I'm looking for something specific, I don't just go and peruse, but if I'm looking for something specific, I'll go to Amazon first, see what it is, and um, try and purchase there instead of shopping on Ulta. Hello. What are you doing? Seriously. Hi. What are you doing? You're so weird. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, so I do have one area where I'm a little bit conflicted and that's in the category of sunscreen. So I do have sunscreens that I'm using up. If you saw my um, empties video, I'm working through a back stock of pipette sunscreens that I way over purchased. I mean, we go through a lot of sunscreen, but I have a lot of it and it's going to expire in like June and July. So, um, but I'm struggling because I do have different like categories of sunscreen. So pipette is my mineral untinted sunscreen that I prefer. But I do also have a tinted mineral sunscreen that I like from Dermatology, and I am on my last bottle of that. So that's a product that I use like if I'm doing really light days. Sometimes I will not wear any complexion products or like any like foundation or concealer, and I'll just put that on my skin because it's tinted and it does help um, kind of even things out. So I will, this dog is being such a nudge today, you guys. Anyways, I'll use that and then I'll do like a little bit of blush and some um, mascara or whatever. Okay, so I just took a phone call, so I don't remember exactly where I left off. But, um, and if you see things wobbling, I apologize. My dog is being a real nudge and he's like, keeps bonking into the stand the camera's on. Anyway, so, oh, I think I was talking about sunscreen. So when I run out of that tinted moisturizer, I would have really liked to repurchase at least a different sort of tinted moisturizer because that's a category of sunscreen that um, I do use for a specific intended purpose. So um, I don't like to wear the pipette sunscreen by itself and without makeup on top because it does leave a little bit of a white cast on me. Um, it's not terrible and it does dissipate, but I prefer to wear that under makeup. And I w really like a tinted moisturizer for days when I'm not wearing foundation or concealer. So I think that's something that I am going to repurchase when I use up 
my current tinted sunscreen, tinted mineral sunscreen. So that's kind of, I, I'm sort of wrestling with that, with like what to do. Like, would it be cheating on my no buy to buy another one if I already still have another mineral sunscreen in my inventory, which I have tons of the pipette left over. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of wrestling with that one, but and I did learn my lesson not to buy back stock of sunscreen because I have so much pipette to go through before it expires and I really don't want to waste it. So anyways, lesson learned there, but I'm still kind of wrestling with that one. Um, I also have been noticing, and I've kind of been trying to like rein this in a little bit. <laughs> I've been noticing a tendency in myself to use excess product, like use more than I need just so I can use something up. Um, so that I can move on to the next thing. <laughs> and um, I want to kind of nip that in the bud because I don't want to waste product. Using more product than you need is still wasting product. And um, obviously, if something is going to go bad or like expire or something before I can use it up, I think maybe that's a bit of a justification for that. But if I'm just using the product because I want to buy more, that's not a good enough reason. So I want to kind of be more mindful about how much of a product I'm using and why I'm using the amounts that I'm using. And that was just kind of a, like a funny realization that came to me like around the middle of the month. So, um, I will say I was proud of myself. So when I went and bought those candles after my grandpa passed away, oh, I don't think I said that it was my grampy that passed away. Um, after he passed away and I went and bought those candles and I ended up buying three instead of one, I was at Marshall's and I genuinely like walked through that cosmetics department. I had a bunch of makeup in my hands. I had some skincare in my hands and I was wandering around and then I went over to the candles and I walked out of Marshall's with just candles. And I was so proud of myself because these were products that I would have enjoyed using. I knew I would have liked them and but I didn't need them. They were things that I did not need. And I, even in the throes of my sadness and trying to cope with shopping, I managed to stop myself from purchasing makeup and skincare that I don't need. Like I said, I still bought three candles, which when I was only supposed to buy one, but I'll take the small ones where I can get them for sure. Um, so I do feel like that was growth for me. That was progress. Um, and I did want to kind of, you know, give myself a pat on the back for that because it was something where I was conscious of it. I was conscious of the fact that I was like holding onto this makeup. I'm like, I don't, do I really need this? No, it's going to break my Nova. I put it back. And then I still, I mean, I still broke it because I bought the extra candles, but whatever. It's nobody's perfect. I'll do better next month. Um, okay. I think that's everything. Um, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> But I did want to be extremely transparent and talk about kind of my experience and share the things that I have brought in. And I'm really, really, really wanting next month to be much lighter in terms of things that I've brought in. Obviously, I will, will replace things as I use them up. Um, still don't need to buy any makeup because I'm still working through a ton of it. Um, but I do hope that February is much lighter in product, you know, bringing in new products. And I'm hoping to continue to work on being mindful about things and thinking about things. I don't, I can't foresee any new category of thing that I would need to purchase. Although I did not anticipate, you know, the new PHA exfoliating toner or the facial mist, those all kind of came up as a result of starting my tretinoin. Um, but anyway, so, you know, I still just want to continue to be mindful. Obviously there's room for improvement, but I do feel good about the progress that I made and the mindfulness behind all of my purchases. And I, I feel like I did okay. All things considered. Um, I want to do better next month and, um, hopefully there's no more traumatic life experiences that try and throw a wrench into my, my plans. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. You guys are amazing. Um, if you made it this far, you might as well give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out with the YouTube algorithms. Um, if you want to continue to follow my no buy journey, um, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I also post, you know, obviously empties, declutters, and I am starting a pro I did start a project pan, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'll be posting an update about that as well, or continual updates about that. And, um, yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have a beautiful day 
and I'm gonna go snuggle this dog because he's being so pushy and starting to chew on my hairbrush like I mentioned. So, all right guys, have a wonderful day. Bye.